All right, all right. Another Thursday night. Um. Oh my God, Joe's watching. <laughs> it's eight o'clock, man. You're supposed to be in the bed. Can anybody hear me? Okay. We got good, good sound and all. Somebody pop up. Can you hear me? Anybody? Can you hear me? Or am I talking to myself here? All right, well, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. I guess y'all can hear me. Okay. All right, um, it's been a while. It's been several months since I've done a video. I was gonna try to get back on them pretty hard through the summer months, but uh, just, you know, things happen. Life gets in the way, works gets in the way, and uh, just didn't find time to do them. Didn't make time. I may have had time, I just didn't make time, but I figured we'd uh, get started back off on something that uh, a lot of people call in and ask about, and <laughs> we need to turn your uh, subtitles on, Jeff. You can't understand my accent, I'm sorry. I'm a southern boy and I talk with a southern drawl. But anyway, I figured I'd get on a topic that, you know, we get, I get a lot of messages and, uh, you know, texts and calls and stuff about, it's about turning the crank gear on the engine. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, tuning cams that way, what, what center line is best with what cam and all, that's between you and cam manufacturers. I'm just going to show you you know the the way that I do it um with the tools that I have that oh my god my daddy's watching the night <laughs> okay I gotta I gotta be real specific with my info because my pops is watching but anyway the tools that I use to turn the crank gear you know how I do it the direction to do it um the different ways that people do it and um but I'll uh this is gonna be kind of I'm gonna kind of run through it kind of quick but it um this is a video y'all can go back and watch it again because there's kind of a lot of information to go through and a lot of procedure so uh i'm just gonna gonna go ahead and, and get get going um i'm gonna use a basic bsp engine here got my trusty arc flywheel on it um at this point of the build i've normally got my ignition timing set on the flywheel um i, I do that with the head off um i got a stop i use to get you know, with the head off, put my degree wheel on it, and my ignition timing is usually set by this point by the long block. Now, when you're checking uh, your, your cam center line, because that's why we're going to move the cam gear, is to set the center line on it. Center lines are very, very important with these stocker style engines. Um, you get up until your modified, your stock appearings, and uh, stock appearings, it's, it's important, but not as important. Modifieds, same way, you know, there, there's a little bit of tuning you can do there, but it's not as important as these low horsepower stock style engines. You know, your plate engines especially. They, they, there are certain numbers that the cam must be on with my builds to make the power that I want it to make in the power curve that I want. And a lot of that is done with the center line of the cam. Now any cam you get should come with some type of cam card to tell you what the center line the suggested center line from the cam manufacturer is. 90% of the time, you're gonna be on the center line that that cam manufacturer recommends because they've done all the testing and stuff on it and um, go off of what they say. Now, there's times that I'll move the center line a little you know, advanced or a little retarded to try to do different things with an engine, um, especially in like plate engines. Why did my screen go dark again? But um, with, with plate engines and stuff, I, I want the center line set at a specific area to get the power curve that I want. Did the screen go dark on y'all or was that just me? It looked like it just tended for some reason. Don't know what's going on. There it goes again. Anyway, as long as y'all can see me, it's fine. But um, the first thing you gotta do is check your center line. Now, I went over a video couple was back toward the first of the year i believe it was that um that showed you how to check center line on these cams i'm gonna kind of go over that procedure again really quick 
that kind of refresh you and, and show you how to set up for the center line. All right, you got your engine here. The valve train should be in it. Um, it should be a complete long block by now. Now what you're gonna use, you're gonna use a piston stop um, because the head's already on it. My piston stop is a two piece stop. It's a, a gutted spark plug that we threaded to uh, make a piston stop out of. And a piston stop is exactly that. It stops the piston. And the reason you're gonna use that is because the head's on, you gotta find top dead center to get your degree wheel and all set. And yes, you gotta have a degree wheel, you gotta have a piston stop, you gotta have these basic tools to at least find your center line. Um, now to move the crank gear, you gotta have another tool that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Um, but uh, Landon's been in here and he moved everything around. I have everything laid out. Then he comes in here and plays on the internet before I get started and he moves stuff around. Uh, you're gonna need some type of pointer. I typically use this back hole right here on the side cover. Um, these can be different threads. They're going to be a, a what the heck is it, what, an M8 metric or either 5 sixteenths fine. One of those two. Just get you a clothes hanger. This is actually a throttle shaft or a throttle rod for the throttle mechanism that I just took and bent to make it work. These degree wheels. This is one that I believe we buy these from Dino Cams. That's where this one comes from and where you can get yours at. We used to try to carry them, but we don't much anymore. We just send people to dyno. All right, now this is where your piston stopping all comes in because you got to find top dead zero. Now, like I said, normally at this point, um, I've already got my ignition timing set, so my degree wheel would already be set up. I'd put the head on it, torque it down, just kind of recheck it, but we're going to find top dead center. Oh, I forgot to bring a 14 in here. Okay. All right, the way I use a piston stop is I kind of roll the engine. I, where the where the lockdown nut is on these degree wheels, I just moved the degree wheel. That's that is in line with the keyway. Wherever the keyway is facing, normally that's where the piston's at. So if the keyway is facing straight up, that usually means the piston is close to top dead center. You can't go off that. That just kind of gives you a reference. And I'll rock the engine back and forth a little bit until my piston stop hits the piston. You don't want to hit it hard because it will make a dent in the piston and squish the oil out the rod and all that. All right. Just tighten up your little pointer here. All right. Typically what I'll do once I feel it hitting the piston is I'll kind of run it down a little bit till it gets on about you know somewhere around 10 degrees lock my nut down which i forgot my wrench so i hope i can do this right and what you want to do is rotate the engine in each direction and it land on that same number uh, so right now we're on 10 degrees we're going to rotate the engine around and be careful and go slow because you'll hit that piston stop before you know it well, I'll be dang. It's on 10 degrees. How about that? You'd have thought I'd have preset this stuff up, wouldn't you? I always check it a couple times and kind of, you know, kind of bump the piston. If it's on the same number in both rotations, that means your degree wheel is zeroed out. All right, ours is zeroed out. Now, you'll remove... You know, pull the piston stop out. Once the numbers are the same in each direction, your, your, your degree wheel is zeroed out at top dead center. I'll loosen that up and we'll put our trusty, because uh, I gotta take this out and put my bracket on there. Most piston stops that are made for engines are one piece and they're lower than this, but a buddy of mine made this piston stop many, many, many years ago and I, uh, I still use it today. It's a good stop, it's just with these things up here, the, the bolt tends to hit them. So I just take it out once I get it set. We tighten down our good old mount here. All right. Now, when you're checking for center line, this is different than checking for lift. What you're gonna have to do is remove the rocker arm. 
because you check in the center line off of the camshaft which means you go directly off the push rod All right, we get our mechanism here off, throw it over here, and forget about it for two or three weeks. All right, now, most dial indicators have this little pointy thing on it. Very carefully, this thing should screw right off. They shouldn't be very tight. Screws off, and it leaves a hole. That hole's a perfect size for this uh, to go on top of the push rod. And I'm going to face everything toward y'all, which, again, I'm doing all this backwards because I'm a left-hander. I typically do it the other direction, but I'm going to have to do it this way so y'all can see it. All right, we'll zero it out, and I'll typically turn the engine over a couple of times to make sure everything is zeroed out and tight. Good time to check your cam lift also, because these cams in the AKRA NKA have a maximum lift off the push rod, which is different than off the, the uh, retainer. Um, off the push rod, I believe, is, what, 222 on the intake? So this would be a good time to check it. Yeah, we're close enough. Anyway, I ain't checking that right now. All right, we're zeroed out. All right, now to check center line, like I showed in my last video, you'll want to get the engine around top dead center with both valves closed. You want to rotate the engine backwards. And I forgot my pen. Nope, I got it right here. You want to rotate the engine backwards until you get to 50 thousandths lift. Everything is zeroed out, so we'll slowly rotate the engine backwards. Now again, there's a couple different ways you could check for center line. This is the way I do it. I've done it for years this way, never had a problem. Some big cam manufacturers do it this way. Some folks do it off the uh, retainer. Some folks rotate forward first. Doesn't matter. I rotate backwards to 50 lift. 50 thousandths just right there and we are at all right remember bottom dead center is right here 180 degrees and you see i got my degree wheel mark you got 180 190 200 10 224 all right you'll you'll write that number down 224 hope that's not important writing on something my wife's there all right, now we'll go the, back the, the regular direction to zero lift or till it zeroes out. Then we'll continue rolling forward until we get to 50 thousandths lift again. You got to be careful. We'll sneak up on you this way and go past it. All right, we're at 50 thousandths, and that is at... Top dead center, so we're one, two, three, four. All right, 224 and four. You add those two numbers together, which is, come on, David Simpson, Mr. Mathematician, I see you on here. 224 and four, believe it or not, is 228. All right, then you'll divide that number by two, which 228 divided by two is what? Come on, come on, come on, 114. That is, a, that is the intake center line on this cam, is 114. This is a BSP4 cam that's in this engine, and that's typically where I like to run them at on these. Uh, the BSP4s, the CL3s, I like around 114, which is what the actual CL3 recommends. Um, but I run these and the BSP4s, which is in this engine, on 114. So this one is, is dead nuts right where it needs to be. Um, all right, let's say it was at 212. I mean, woo, 112 center line, and you needed it at 114. So that means you're going to have to move the cam gear to get this cam to 114, or you're going to have to call up Dino or somebody and get a cam cut at the degree that you need. Sometimes that can be tricky. So what, what a lot of us do is we move the cam gear. All right, so to do that, you got to take all this stuff off that you just set or I do usually I'll leave my pointer on my side cover because you got to take the side cover off all right because we got to move the cam gear but you be real careful a lot of times the uh, pointer will stay where it needs to and you'll be fairly close when you go back together with it oh 
I gotta take all the bolts out of it. I thought I took them out before the show. That's what happens when you're in here with Landon and he's messing around and keeping you from doing things. All right, we're gonna take that. Make sure there's no oil in it too. Um, I was doing this one day for somebody here at the house and they wanted me to check something for them and I never ask. I just popped the side cover loose. That thing had oil in it. Oil ran all over the side of me. Oh, see, that's a B. I wrote on it. That's BSP4. So those of you who would, would would ask, I know, but it's BSP4. This is the standard cams that that come in these box stock engines. Now they come from the factory this way. All right, we're gonna line up our dots. Take out our cam. Most time, I'll take the you know the push rods and the, and the lifters out of it also. It just helps to keep this stuff out of the way. Ah, right, now this is what we got to move. Now on these engines. Unlike the Briggs and Strattons, the Animals, the Flatheads, um, these gears are not keyed. They're on what's called an interference fit. The gear is slightly smaller than the crankshaft. They heat the gears up really hot and they drive them on, you know, with a little machine that holds everything straight, supposed to, and they cool and they, they lock down to the crankshaft. Now, I will warn you, this is this is something I really don't like doing to these engines because once you move it, that interference fit is interrupted and in some types of engines, it won't hold. Like if you're doing this in a stock appearing with stiff valve springs, I don't recommend moving this unless you move it, get it where you set it, and then tack weld it. That's legal in most modified classes. It's not legal in the stock class. You cannot tack weld in the stock class. I repeat. You move this gear, you cannot tack weld it legally in the stock class. I don't want nobody going to a track, moving the gear, tack welding, and saying, well, Jody said you can move it. No, Jody didn't say you can didn't tack weld it. Jody said you can move it, you can tack weld it in modified classes, but not the stock class. But the reason I don't like moving it, like I say, is it messes up that interference fit, and it's very hard to move this gear and get it right the first try. Usually you got to move it at least twice. Because if you feel it move, a lot of times it's too much. Because if you're going from 112 center line up to 114, that's a very little movement in this gear. Now, the way we move these, this is the unit that I use. This comes from Lewis Stout. Um, basically, it holds the gear so that you can turn the crankshaft inside the gear. Now, there's some other units out there that lock the crankshaft down and you stick it on the gear and you actually turn the gear now you got to remember if you're using this you're turning the crankshaft so you're turning the opposite direction that you want the gear to move if you're moving the actual gear you move the gear the direction you want it to move it's kind of like setting flywheel timing it's, it can be confusing you know advancing it retarding it but once you figure out which way to move it write that on there because if you're raising the center line going from 112 to 114, what you're doing when that center line is high on the intake side, it tends to move the power band, these stock engines, up a little bit. So if you've got an engine with a CL3 or you know one of the EV6s or the new precision cam that I use a lot, um, you put it in, you never check the center line on it, you're in a hurry. You get to the dyno, and it kind of falls off a little more than it's supposed to. It makes usually these engines like making peak on my dyno, good engines between six and 6,200. I've had some go 63, 64, but the most average is 61, 62. The engine makes good power, but it's peaking at like 58 and it's falling off a few hundred RPMs before where you want to actually turn it, you know, 68, 69. So typically that means that the center line on your cam is too low. You need to move it up and it will moving the cam center line up and down technically don't give you any more power you're not going to gain or lose no real power from this it's just going to move the curve up to where you need it to be so if it's peaking at 58 at 112 center line you move it to 114 it's probably going to peak around 6000 maybe even 61 it's going to move that curve up a little higher it might affect the bottom end a little bit but we're not drag racing with these engines we're circle track racing we need mid-range to top end power that's where we concentrate the most on power we want good bottom end but we want really good mid-range and excellent top end that's what we strive for in these engines 
All right, so enough jibber jabber. But like I say, you have to take the cam out to use this. All right, the, the kit comes with this big plate and it's very thick. And you'll see why it needs to be that way in a minute. And nuts and bolts and stuff to hold it in. Um, what you'll do, uh oh, I just dropped one and hit the cat in the head. How about that? It'll have these two, like I say, this comes from Lewis Stout at Stout Racing. Um, Rick's Rockets, he makes this stuff. This is a very good unit. I've used it several times and it works great. It'll come with these two really long dowel pins. You'll take these out, the stock dowel pins, and put these in because it, it helps hold it together better. Um, and it also comes with four um, Allen bolts to hold it in. Also, what you're going to do is you ain't got to have the crank turned in no specific direction. It'll go, all it's going to do is mesh the gears. All right, you're going to put your pins in your block. That's going to line up just like a normal side cover. And sometimes you kind of have to rock it around to get the gear to mesh up inside the unit. All right, once it does, it goes on just like a normal side cover. Um, I typically take the side cover gaskets off for this. All right, you'll put your four bolts in, the regular bolt holes. Now, I'm not actually going to move this gear because it's, it's dead nuts where it needs to be, and this engine's going back to my shop tomorrow to be turned into a... a to get some ponies out of it. So I'm not gonna move this gear, it's right where it needs to be. But uh, you'll tighten these down. Don't ask me what size head these are, cause I don't know. Get a wrench, put something in it until it fits. You wanna snug them down pretty good. All right, and then it comes with this here unit here. Looks like a reverse socket of some sort. It's got a keyway in it. It's got a half inch drive in it. Uh, you'll put the, put the keyway on the shaft which I can't find my, oh, it checks a regular, like a regular clutch key. You'll put the key on the shaft, and then you'll slide the little unit out with the, with the uh, ratchet side out. I don't know what that's called, I'm sorry, but that's where you put a ratchet. The ratchet hole, how about that? <laughs> that could be taken many different ways. Uh, it takes, you know, a half inch drive ratchet. And basically, this, holds the gear in place with all the bolts and all the pins. It'll hold that gear good and tight. And you'll use this ratchet. This is an old ratchet. I forgot my ratchet at the shop. This is the one I keep in my trailer. If I have a flat tire, that's why it's rusted. It's been sitting in a box. But I just had to run out there and get one. Now, you're not gonna move this with just this ratchet. You know, some people might. Charles Mosley might. He's a big enough man. He might can move it, you know, with one hand. But I'm about less than half his body weight, so I have to use what's called a cheater bar. Put it on here. Now, like I say, once you figure out which direction you need to go, I've marked mine. Now, retarding the cam is technically is, is raising the center line on it. So, you're gonna turn the crankshaft this way. All right, now if you was using another unit that locked onto the gear to move the gear, you would move the gear back to me. But we're using this unit that turns the crankshaft. So we're going to retard the center line on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our ratchet on there. I didn't put a key in here. That's why it's turning. So I could demonstrate. Um, we're going to put, a, put our ratchet on here. We got everything locked down. We need to go from 112 to 114. All right. Normally what I do, if you notice on here, I have drawn a line right here and I'll get a sharpie a very very good sharp one I keep it just specifically for this and I'll make a line right below it really fine and really narrow as I can because if those lines actually move you've probably gone too far that's how that's how precise this is I mean like I say if you when you get to you know moving it you'll kind of start bouncing on it, you'll hear it go pop it'll pop normally that's gone about four degrees instead of two so you're probably going to have to, you know, go back the other direction. Like I say, it's very rare to move these gears and get it on the first try. I've done it once out of all the engines I've done. Typically, I have to top it forward and then, you know, real easily just kind of sit there and bounce on it 
and hope it moves and then check it hope it moves and then check it um but like i say it's you got to put a cheater bar on you got to get on back you got to get down on it and i like to kind of instead of just going with it i'll get some pressure on it and kind of bounce it you know and it'll you know, you'll, you'll hear it kind of sound like a like a knuckle crack stop it take all this off hook everything back up and recheck your center line it's a timely process this is one of the things i hate about building these stock engines is I can literally build two complete race ready stock appearings, have them dynoed and shipped out to a guy before I can get done with one of these engines. If you do it right, I'm talking from the block work to the head work to doing little stuff like this, little things like this is what makes separates a good engine from a great engine is making sure the cams in the right spot. And I have, have many engines that I've slapped cams in, you know, I was in a hurry building them. I got behind, I put them on the dyno, and they turned out great. I mean, they was the numbers hit good. And I've had some that I've spent a lot of time on, but just failed to check the cam, and they wasn't that good. I have to take them, you know, back off the dyno, go do this, put it back on the dyno, check something else. But this little stuff like this is... Yeah, I wasn't calling Charles fat. I'm calling him big. He's a, he's a big man. I'm sorry. He could probably move this with one hand. <laughs> he's a lot stronger than I am. Yeah, no doubt. I'm 150 pounds. He's what, 225, 230, or bigger? He's too big to be on a mini bike. I put it to you that way. Um, but those he's got will carry him. Anyway, little things like this is what makes these engines really run good. And getting the cam right and having the right tools to do it with. There's some people out there that's made stuff years ago. They've made wrenches and all to go on the cam or on the crank. They'll put the cams in vices. You know and move them put them back in this is the best one i've used so far i ain't trying to plug lewis here or nothing even though this is a, a great product um hit him up tomorrow tell him joey at arc racing sent you there he might give you a discount i don't know um i don't get no kickback off of it whether he does or not but using using the proper tools to get this stuff set where it needs to be and uh, now everybody's talking about how strong Charles Mosley is. Yeah, Charles Mosley's strong. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all put your attention back on me, not Charles. <laughs> but uh, getting these things right makes them... It is, is, is the bee's knees to making these engines run. Now, like I said, once you, once you move it, you got to take all this fancy stuff off. Drop bolts on the floor. Step on them. Twist your back. Twist your ankle. Have to call somebody to help you off the floor. Yell at David for dropping something that he didn't drop. Make him go clean the bathroom. By that time, this is off and we are putting our... Like I say, once you get this off, I didn't use the solid dowels because um, I'm just in a hurry. Uh, you take all this off, you'll put your, you'll put your lifter back in. What did I do with it? Like I said, I'm only using one lifter because I'm only checking one side because the other side's exactly the same way. Usually if you get the intake where it needs to be, the exhaust is going to sort of fall in line if the cam was ground correctly. Don't hold me to that though. I always check both sides. Uh, we line up our dots, dot to dot. We put our gasket back on. Side cover. Put our bolts in. Yink, yink. Hook all this stuff back up and recheck it. Like I say, you're normally going to have to do this at least twice. Take this stuff off. Um, probably three or four times the first few times you do it. Once you learn how to move it, I've used heat. I've not used heat, and it's aggravating either way. Um, but it really makes a difference in, in whether these, these engines, you know, run good or run great. And with the level of competition, advertising first, we talk second. And with the level of competition, the builders that's out there now, you know, there's some, you know, common, I wouldn't call them common, um, DIY builders 
backyard builders, if you want to call them that, you know, that's building some really, really good stuff out here because there's a lot of information available now. There's a lot of parts available. You know, people can buy stuff off the shelf already done. Um, you know, but uh, it, you you got to make sure these engines are right in order to uh, in order to to, to 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 get the power you need to run up front. That you know, some people might not think two tenths of a horsepower is a lot in these engines. Um, at seven thousand RPMs, two tenths of a horsepower, people will pay five six hundred dollars for two tenths at seven thousand. Um, because I've had people offer me that and more to get two tenths at seven thousand and you know if if you get it you make the money you know if not then they go somewhere else um but like i was saying earlier about modifieds i don't recommend moving these gears on modifieds unless you're going to tack weld the gear and you can mess up the gear by tack welding it because you can run over it could melt the the teeth the tooth on there a little too much you got to go in with a die grinder and grind it out it's a lot of work um that's what they make these cams for. The last video I done was about, you know, cam profiles and, you know, matching them with heads and stuff like that. And I went over these these cams, these are adjustable cams. Um, I didn't go into them a lot, but what we just done there on that crank gear can be solved with this cam and modifies. Now, this is a plug for dyno cams, this is a plug for ISKI, uh, for McGee cams, for precision cams. For NR cams, anybody that makes adjustable cam gears, um, I mentioned precision, yeah. Um, you change the cam timing with these instead of moving that gear. And um, it's a lot simpler this way. I mean, these cams are a little expensive, but with the time it takes that it saves from, from doing all this and taking the side cover off, moving it, then tack welding the crank, and uh oh, I messed up that crank, the gear's boogered up, and I gotta do it again. You buy one of these cams, it's all done. You know, you can, you got many different settings on these cams. You got straight up, which is the way they come. You got plus two, minus two, plus four, minus four, plus six, minus six. You can go from zero to six degrees positive or uh, retarded and two degrees to six degrees advanced. And it's the same way in modifieds. Moving the cam, advancing it or retarding it is doing basically all it's doing is is changing the power curve um when you advance a camshaft when you advance that gear you're making the cam work quicker it's advancing the speed of the cam per se it's all it's doing is changing the timing but it's advancing the power curve and getting to the power quicker which means it's going to fall off more on top end depending on the grinds you got the type of engine you got now you're an all-out open build you know, four degrees cam time is not going to make that big a difference in a, you know, 25, 28 horsepower engine. Um, you know, because a whole horsepower in one of those engines really can't be felt on, on most racetracks. Um, but they can, you know, two, three, four tenths, a half a horsepower is detrimental to one of these. You know, if somebody's got a half more horsepower at 7,000 than you do, it's visibly noticeable on the racetrack in most cases, especially these big tracks we're running around here with these, you know, 16 and 17, sometimes 18 drivers where you've got to have that top end speed and that, that two or three tenths, it's, you know, 6,900, 7,000, um, makes a big difference. But in modifieds, it's all settled with these. You ain't got to move no gears. Um, you ain't got to, you ain't got to stress over nothing. You ain't got to worry about messing nothing up. You check your center line. Your center line is where the cam says it needs to be. Okay, let's put it on the dyno. If we're on the dyno, I need, you know, the engine's doing good. We got my carb tuned good. Um, I need to, I need to raise the, the, the power curve up about two, 300 RPMs to kind of get my clutch where it needs to be and get my end of my straightaway. So you take the side cover off, take the cam out, move the cam gear. You know, I showed you this last time, but the way these things set up, they come set up in the standard location which is usually going to be on a dyno cam, either there's either going to be the dyno logo right there or there's going to be a dinosaur right there. Either way, you line up whatever dot you're using with the exhaust load. And it's not going to be, like I said in the last video, it ain't going to be dead on. It might be a little off to the side, but you want that exhaust load, which is the exhaust load on the cam, you point it straight up at 12 o'clock, and whatever dot is in this area, which is right here, that's the standard where it comes set, right there, that yellow dot. That's straight up. 
All right, if you want to go two degrees retarded, which is two degrees negative, you'll take the bolts out, you'll take the gear off, you'll line that exhaust lobe up with the two negative. If you want it two degrees advance, same way. You'll line that exhaust lobe up with the two degrees positive. And um, that's as simple as it is with modifieds. That's why I tell you I don't recommend moving the gear on modifieds. You got so many more options, so many cam companies out there that's got adjustable cams that make it so easy and you ain't got to worry about the gear moving. Now, a lot of these engines, if I'm running, this is a 308. If I'm running you know, a 308, a 310, you know, a 350, six or you know there's some engines i run 400 lift cams in a lot of valve spring pressure that's you know i i typically try to spot weld the gear on those to begin with um because that's a lot of spring pressure and as the crank gets hot and begins to wear i've had some moves that i've never moved from the beginning and these were honda crankshafts um we'll run them a couple three races you're turning them 8800 9000 with you know 45 50 pounds of seat pressure and that's a lot of pressure on that gear turning them high rpms and that and the way the cam hits it it's kind of harmonics on it gets hot and boom the engine just falls off one night and won't hardly take off that's because the, the gear has slipped so a lot of times i'll spot weld the gears i'm gonna wind up knocking this over i'll uh, spot weld the gears on modifies or you know use a billet crank the billet crank has a key in it you know and all that stuff's billet and you know that you ain't have to don't have to worry about them moving you know they've been known to break over time you know but nothing is 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 unbreakable or won't break all right that was a mouthful and it was pretty quick but like i said it's a video y'all can go back and watch it as many times as you need to that was just the, the basic way and the reasoning behind moving the cam gear is you wanting on these stock engines, AKRAs, NKAs, WKAs, NWAs, whatever sanctioning bodies out there of all the 55 that fight amongst each other about what rules are what, you can set your cam to wherever the center line recommends from the cam manufacturers. Now, if you know a lot of the BSP cams don't have cam cards with them. Um, most of you know this, some of you don't. The BSP cams are typically copies of other cams. So what I do is I know which cams they copied and I just kind of go off those sheets. Like the BSP4 is really, really close to a CL3. So I typically set the BSP4 up like a CL3. The BSP3 cams, if you can still find those, those are really good in plate engines. Um, set up really really close to the CL2 so I set the center lines you know opening and closing and stuff like that off of those cams <clears throat> now like I said before with plate engines um you can use like BSP4 it's set on like a 114 center line that's a little high in my opinion for a green plate will it work fine in there it'll work it'll work good it'll work a lot better than a stock cam but I want to get a cam in a plate engine that's going to be... Man, you take that roll tied somewhere else and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> I should have brought my... Anyway, it's football season. And the only time of the year when people have a legitimate reason to hate each other is football season. And Chad, you can roll your tide right on off my show. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But anyway, um, God, I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, plate engines. I want to get a cam that's going to have a lower center line or is ground for a specific plate engine. Like, you know, Precision um, has a really good cam that I've used a lot in plate engines. It's ground for a plate engine. I think it's got like a 113 center line on it. I would never use a standard 113 cam in a plate set that high. Um, but that one's specifically ground for it and works really good, FYI. Um, now, like with Dyno, um, green plates purple plate or well, red and green plates i either like using the cl2 or the bsp3 those cams are really close and they got a a, a lower rpm rating uh, the center line is still a little high but the rpm rating for those cams is typically you know the heart of the pool is a little bit lower 
and I will lower the center line on them. Tip, typically on the CL2s, you know, I'm shooting for 111, you know, maybe 112-ish on center lines. But you can take other types of cams that's designed for unrestricted and make them work better in plate engines by lowering the center line or advancing the center line. Okay, you're advancing the cam, making the cam work quicker. It's getting to the power curve quicker, which is what a plate engine needs because they, they tend not to get up in the RPM range where an unrestricted is. Now, like blue plates, I typically treat them just like an unrestricted because we typically turn those engines 65, 66, sometimes 67. So I treat them just like an unrestricted. And a purple plate, it's kind of in a world of its own. Um, red and greens, I tend to treat the same. They get the same cams. The purple, I've got a few I use depending on what kind of track they own, and I still move the center lines on them. But that helps fine tune that torque curve to be where it needs to be, whether it's plate or unrestricted. Now, I know I've probably got 45 million questions here that I'm not going to get to. Preston Sparks. I, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you at the track this weekend too, homie. <laughs> That's the hot shoe of the area, Mr. Preston Sparks. Y'all don't know him. Just race for a little while longer, and y'all, y'all, y'all get introduced to him very soon and very quickly. He's he's one of the best around. Uh, somebody asked if this video is only on Facebook. Uh, well, it's on Facebook now. Uh, in the morning, I'll upload it. Excuse me, David Simpson will upload it to uh to YouTube and we've got a YouTube channel that I, we save all these videos on. They're all on our Facebook page if you scroll down, but they're easier to find on YouTube. We're ARC Racing on YouTube. Every video we've ever done, whether it be tech videos like this or videos I shoot at the track racing, they're all on there. Alright. I'm not going to scroll through this too much because I don't like dead air. Right, is there any any questions at all about turning the gear, about the mechanism used, about how to do it, anything? No, Tom, I did not call Charles fat. I called him bigger than me, not fat. There's a difference. What's the old saying? There's a difference between a girl with a big butt and a big butt girl. You know, that's the difference there. Yeah, that phrase goes a little bit different than that. I just my 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 daddy's watching. Several of my uncles are watching. Cousins are watching. I think I saw my niece on here, so I'm trying not to cuss. Yeah. I've never messed with none of the Tilliston cams. I've got one of the. In fact, the stock appearing engine that I run is one of the Tilliston blocks. One of the first two twelve blocks they got. I never even checked the cam. I honestly have no idea. Sorry, sad Vols fan. <laughs> blue plate cam. I either use a CL3 in a blue plate or the EV6 in a blue plate. Those are my two favorite cams for a blue plate. But anyway, um, nobody has a question on that. That's odd. Usually I got 45,000 questions over something I've done because I blubber something up or I talk about things I shouldn't be talking about. Well, Charles, I hope you learned something tonight, buddy. I'm glad to see you on here, Mr. Charles Mosley. Mr. Minibike. Go back and tell everybody out in Compton that, that Jody taught you something. <laughs> I'm working on a mini bike too, Charles, in case you hadn't noticed. I mean, it ain't no stretched out uh, drag strip rail like what y'all got. That's coming. Um, I'm just putting something together now for the mini bike guys to kind of uh, 
run around and show off on but I'm um, I'm working on a I'm going to eventually start working on a uh stretched out race job like y'all build. I just got to get some machines and some people freed up by air so we can work on it. Uh where somebody asked is the superhero Landon is he was in here a while ago on my page doing some stuff. He's must be in there watching TV or something. I ain't heard a peep out of him or the dog or my wife yelling at the dog or nothing. God, imagine a lot of questions on here or a lot of responses. Most of it's just people watching. So there's no questions on this. Oh my God, I must have done a pretty good job on it. Any updates on the mini bike build? Yeah, I just uh, just talked about it, but we I got a little mini bike with somebody. I think it's what they call. I ain't I ain't up to date on what what chassis what in these mini bikes. Um, actually, I think Charles is the one that called it a doodle bug. I think it's a doodle bug chassis. I don't know. It's a funny looking little thing either way. I got I got two. I got like an off road Baja style that's rideable ready to go now and then i've got the the frame and i'm going to build a little a little mock-up drag bike i mean it's not going to be something that i would ride down the racetrack but um it's going to be something cool to look at if nothing else and eventually i hope i hope fingers crossed this winter um we're able to slow down enough to where i can start working on an actual you know drag chassis like uh Charles and them and the guys in Detroit. I've been watching a lot of them, you know, Detroit videos. Uh, and it was some, they, they have some wild characters on these mini bikes. Whether they're from California, whether they're from Florida, Virginia. There's a mini bike league here in Georgia. Um, y'all, y'all guys are crazy. <laughs> I thought, you know, running go karts around Daytona and Charlotte Motor Speedway at you know, eighty plus, close to ninety miles an hour was kind of stupid. But I feel. A lot safer on that than what I'm watching you guys do down the drag strip because these guys is running. I watched some videos today. They're running, you know, 78, close to 80 miles an hour. I've seen, because they wasn't, you know, clone engines. They were like motorcycle engines that, that were running, you know, 80 plus miles an hour in the eighth of a mile. You know, like seven nines and eight seconds in the eighth of a mile. Dude, my truck won't even do that. <laughs> and these guys are doing it on mini bikes. And, um, I'm not gonna get to that level. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I, I I I'm 43 years old, and the dirt hurts when I get thrown on it. I don't want to find out what asphalt will do to my backside. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna ride the mini bike, but I ain't gonna race it. I may I may I may get David Simpson to do that because he's he's scrawnier than I am, and uh, he'll be a little a little faster on it probably. All right, somebody asked something about a Tilliston block. Yeah. The Tilliston block. All right, like I say, the stock appearing engine that I've I've run once, and um, a local guy here, Tanner 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 Tan, I called him Tanner <laughs> Tanner Hamilton. Um, he's uh, run it a couple times. I built it out of one of the first two twelves that they brought over. It's the one that's got the the top fin is is got a covering on it or a brace made into it i mean it's a good looking block i mean it looks as good as any other block out there it's got some stuff here and there that i like about it um but is it unbreakable heck no now you get to throw in some some three inch bores some extended deck you know stroke to it and not brace it up it's it's, it's gonna break um you know honda blocks break when you do that stuff to them um, is it better than what's out there now as far as like these BSP blocks? Yes, it is It's got some some areas in it. that's beefed up um, a little bit more webbing and uh, Getting messages in the middle of the video that's weird. Um, they got you know, they're thicker in some places you got some molding here and um, they're, they're a good block, you know, they're as far as being square they was just as square or as out of squares as Honda blocks that I've used. None of those blocks are precision made. 
Um, okay, Johnny, I got your message. Um, you're sending pictures and it's messing me up. I got a one track mind, dude. Um, but, uh, crap, what was I? Oh, none of those blocks are precision made. So the bores are going to be off on some, you know, the crankshafts are going to be not perfect in them, but they're, they're good blocks, you know, a lot better than, you know, predator blocks, especially, um, I've never been a fan of the uh, non-Hemi Predator block, the polished looking one. I've broken more of those blocks than anything. And I've had some with braces on them and they just break. And other people say they never broke one, but that's the, the I've broke more of those blocks than anything. I just don't like the non-Hemi Predator block. How do you figure out carb jets to cam and center line uh, well first thing you do is you set the center line to the card whatever the card says if the card says 112 you set you know if you're using it for the the, re, the specific engine that the cam was built for set the center lines to what the paper says because the people that build it is gonna know the most about it um, and then you go to the dyno and that's how you determine your jets um, now you know, if you're building your own carburetor, uh, that's where a lot of a lot of dyno work, a lot of flow bench work, a lot of you know, wet jet work and stuff like that comes into play. Um, if you don't have all that stuff, and you do happen to have a dyno, you're gonna have to kind of start at a neutral jetting and and, and go from there. Um, you know, once you build enough engines and you get a formula worked out, you can go to the dyno with ignition timing and basic jetting and be close and just kind of fine tune from there. Uh, the best thing to do is to buy a blueprinted carburetor from somebody and all that work has been done for you. Now, will blueprinted carburetors come out the box, go on your engine and run perfect? Most of the time. Um, but my carburetors are, are built and dyno tested here in Albany, Georgia. Actually, I live in Durham and I work in Albany. But they're dyno tested in South Georgia. If you're in Vermont, the air is going to be different up there. You're going to take that blueprinted carburetor that worked really good here. It might work great there. You may have to change a jet or two in it. Um, but blueprinted carburetors, whether it's from me, whether it's from you know dyno, whether it's from Voss or Dover, you know, whoever um, is going to be a step in the right direction versus doing it yourself. Yeah, I, Chad, I would like to put Daniel on the mini bike so he can run over somebody else and put wheel marks in the back of their helmet. <laughs> in case you hadn't heard the story from Florida, what was it, two weeks ago? Daniel will hop me up and I've got a black mark on the back of my helmet. It's all good though, it was fun. Aluminum cylinder, Tilston block. I have not yet dealt with one of those, I'm sorry to say. I uh, feel kind of ashamed for saying that, but I have not got my hands on one of the, I guess they call it the three inch bore block or it's ready for a sleeve to go 2815, whatever. I have not dealt with one of those blocks. Um, I have seen one of the 2815s uh, but not the aluminum now with that would you talking about the aluminum cylinder i would not recommend you getting that three inch cylinder and run it with aluminum cylinder like that because that's not the correct aluminum to run like that and the pistons made today are not coated to run an aluminum block like the old flatheads used to be you will get some galling happen those blocks i don't believe I have not researched up on this, I'm ashamed to say, but I do not believe that those Tilliston blocks with the aluminum cylinders are made to be run that way. They're designed to be, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I do believe they are designed to be brought in and have a sleeve put in them so that you can go 2815, 2835, maybe even 29, but I don't believe they're designed to be run aluminum like they are. Can a GX340 be bored to a 390 without resleeving? I 
think. I've never done it, but I believe there's enough meat there to do it. Because I know you can take a 390 um, to a 420 without resleeving it. Or I did. Uh, best thing to do would be start out with a 390. There's a lot of blocks out there. But a 340 is, is, is a Honda 340 block. Is as good as a 390 block. It's just got a smaller sleeve in it. I believe it can be bored to 88 millimeters. Don't quote me on that, but I believe. Need to make a top plate for the Tilly block. Is it different? Because the one I got takes a regular top plate. Because like I said, I got one of the first blocks they ever brought in. Um, I've had this block for a while. A long time. Not saying the first one to ever get one, but it's one of the first batch they ever done. And I, be, I didn't, I guess the new blocks take a new top plate. Like I say, I have not messed with the, the newest block they got. I have not got one yet. If, if you send me one of them blocks, Jason, I'll be glad to make a top plate for it. <laughs> you ain't getting your block back, but I'll send you a top plate. Yeah, the 2835, I believe, comes with a sleeve in it already. Um. Yeah, yeah, Charles. I think I think Charles. If I'm not mistaken, Charles, didn't you do something on YouTube about the the uh, aluminum block or something? I remember something popping up in my YouTube feed. Um, with you talking about the new Tilson block. You know, I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Um, but I believe Charles has something on the aluminum bore block about being sleeved and whatever. The Tilly block that I have and all the other ones used is based off of the Hemi style block or a Honda block or the BSP block. Um, it's, you know, the Ducar block, all that stuff. All, all those blocks are, are the same basic design with slight differences as far as the, the webbing and the extra meat here and there. All right. It's not gonna take the price tag off this. <laughs> Hmm, how about that? All right, anything else? Yeah, like I say, I hadn't seen the, the new uh, the new block, so, you know. They're asking the wrong person about that, because that's one thing that I can't answer right now, because I have not seen the newest one. I've seen pictures of them, but I have not held it with my hands it, so. Y'all gonna have to go to Charles to probably tell you something about it because I know he's probably used one. Landon has fallen asleep. Wow, I think it's like the first show ever he ain't made an appearance. I mean, the cat's on the floor here snoring. I didn't realize he would be too. Okay, well. So y'all ain't gonna get to see Landon tonight, sorry. But yeah, again, I have not seen the new Tillerson block, the new, the newest version. I have not seen one, so um, I have no, no other. As far as Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. So, anyway, um, again, quick rundown on the cam thing. I hope I explained everything where you can understand it. Um, if I didn't. You know, pop me a question. I'll be glad to answer it. Give me a call um, at the shop. Uh, send me a message. You know, if there's something about it that, that you feel like I didn't explain well or I went through too fast, you know, watch the video again. But uh, anyway, like I say, the part I used from Lewis Stout, um, I got a message a while ago from someone about somebody in Canada makes one of these gear moving mechanism thingies. I'll link that up later on. Uh, but other than that, um, I guess that's, I guess that's all I got tonight. Wow. I will do a quick plug though. Okay. Predator. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Glenn, I'll be sure to upload Landon's pre-show video that he does on my personal page to the YouTube channel tomorrow so you can watch him. It's like 20 minutes of nothing but him doing YouTube or, or uh, Facebook faces, and he calls it funny faces, whatever. If I have a 114 center line and the motor doesn't peak high, will you go above what the card says? I have. Um, typically, if a cam center line's at 114, it's designed to be a high RPM cam. I make sure it's at 114, not 113. And typically, that's a that that could be a tuning problem. But I have moved cams up to to 115, 115 and a half before. Um, it killed the bottom end, um, but it really helped it on top. So you got to find that happy medium of getting really good top end and not killing the bottom end too much. But I have. I don't recommend doing it often. I will not be at the Overton race on the 19th. Um, I will be in Savannah that weekend uh, road racing, um, October 19th. That's the last... I believe that's the last ever race at Dumplin' Valley. Um, the Overton Memorial Race is on the 19th. Um, I, I hate that I'm not going to be there. Um, is it October 19th or November 19th? Oh, you just said the 19th. If it's October 19th, no, I will not be there. Um, but anyone within driving distance of that place needs to go support that track for their one last race. Um, that has been one of the one of the um, crown jewel, I guess you could call it, tracks of the south for a long time. Um, Dumplin' Valley has gone through a lot of changes over the years. I've run there a few times. Um, it's a great track, good people. Um, but if anyone is looking for something to do on the 19th, the Overton Memorial Race, just a modified style race, um, go and support the race, go and support the track, and, and y'all give them a really big send-off because that track is shutting down, unfortunately, and, um, you know, we need to go support them one more time. Yes, I will be in Jasper in November. I guess you're talking about the World 100. Uh, yes, I will be there. I'm not sure what I'm going to be running yet, but I will be there. Yes, October 19th at Dumplin Valley. Um, look it up online, uh, Overton Memorial or Dumplin' Valley Cartway, and um, you know y'all go support them for one last time. I really wish I could go, but we're booked to go to Savannah that weekend and road race. Um, I hate them gonna miss it. I really do. That's a good place up there. All right, all right, all right. What well, because it run fine till you put a load on it and it dies? Uh. Hmm. What'd you do to the Predator, Jason? Um, is it like out of the box? Did you build it? Did you build the carburetor, the blueprint of carburetor? Because usually if it'll sit there and run, you gotta put a load on it, that's some type of carburetor issue. Um, it's too lean. Um, more than likely, some type of fuel delivery or carburetor issue. You know, I need to know what all's been done to the carb. All right, well, that looks like about it. Um, kind of easy going tonight, it looks like. Oh, the pavement race. The pavement race is in October, isn't it? I thought the pavement race was like October, like the last weekend in October. I'm going to try to come to the pavement race, too. I'm going to try. Um, I said I was going to come, but things is kind of, with you know, my wife's on a new work schedule and stuff, and she works weekends sometimes, and I'm going to try to. But yes, I will be at the World 100, whether she's working or not. I'll tie the kid up in the, tie him up and throw him in the closet till she gets home or something. I didn't know they moved it. Sorry. I, I need to keep up with stuff, I guess. But yeah, I'm on, if it's in November, I'll more than likely be there. Um, but I will definitely be at the World 100. All right, well, I guess I'm going to wrap it up there, folks. Um, get on in there and get some other stuff done. Go back and, because like I say, uh, 
but like I say, I for some reason I can't see all the questions on here while it's live. Um, I'll go back after I get done, and you know if there's any questions on there that I didn't see during the live thing, I usually try to answer them. Um, but like I say, any other questions on this, you know, shoot me a message on here on Facebook, you know, through you know the ARC site. Uh, send me an email to. Um, to uh, Jody at ARCRacing.com. Give me a call at the shop at 800-521-3560. Right there. Vanna White, baby. And, uh, you know, hit me up. Any other questions you got on this, concerns, uh, things I should have said, things I shouldn't have said, whatever, hit me up. Uh, I'm there for you. That's what I do. That's what I am. That's who I is. And uh, until next time, which I hope I'm not going to take as long for the next video, um, I'm going to try to do some live stuff from Savannah in a few weeks. Um, but either way, I'll do GoPro videos over there and have them uploaded. And um, I'm planning on running Animal over there in Savannah. Um, I got a new Animal built. I had built Animal in a while, and I got one built for the road racing. And I'm going to take it over there and try it out make sure it's what I want before we go to Daytona because I'm going to run Animal both days in Daytona. And uh, But until then, uh, y'all hit me up and thank y'all for stopping by and I will see y'all later. Thanks.